good day viewers hope you are having a nice time at home or in the office or wherever you are welcome to another ex exciting uh, edition of the sme clinic a video and your radio and tv show designed to expose a small and medium entrepreneur to all the tools the info and hands-on experience needed to help you grow a great and profitable business the clinic is a coaching program that provides business tips, answers to business-related questions, relevant information, and solutions to common business challenges. It then assists you to close the knowledge gaps, expand opportunity, know what to do. In today's edition, we'll be airing another interview with a wonderful agropreneur, our Did You Know segment. We'll be looking at how to increase customer loyalty using client file. And then finally, our main teaching today is a continuation of our series on the five ways to achieve profitability for your business. Let's go on a short break. You can still follow us on our social media handle. It's still the SME Clinic, and I'm your host, Coach Alex Baba. Uh, welcome to the interview segment. Today I have with me a very wonderful, dynamic, and young uh, agropreneur and consultant, Simon Adeni. Um, maybe you should introduce yourself to the audience. Okay, good day, viewers at home. I'm Simon Adeni. I'm, uh, I'm a consultant and um, an agropreneur. That is um, my entrepreneurship aspect is in the agriculture. So that is what we do. Thank you, uh, Mr. Simon. I also am aware that you have a TV show uh, in line with what you do. Can you just tell us a bit about it? Well, um, the TV show is, um, is Agripreneur. It's showing on, on um, ITV, Independence Television, Abuja, probably where you're watching us right now. So the main purpose and targets of the program is to bring to you step-by-step -step process and um, how you can go about it, like a do-it-yourself program. The things you need to know when you want to venture into some certain aspects of um, agriculture, talk of livestock, um, animal boundary, crop farming, and um, cash, other cash crops. So the program is, um, is running on ITV Abuja. Okay, since you deal uh, a lot with uh, agropreneurs, so can you share with us, uh, as you interact with them as a consultant and then as a show host, what are the challenges that agri uh, agriculturists face currently in Nigeria? Oh, well, um, like every other aspect of business, we know profit making is the sole purpose of any business that um, you sought to do. And um, the small and medium scale enterprises is not left out because a couple of youths now are trying to put in their resources and effort to see what we can do and how we can change things around in terms of economy um, progress in the country. However, all these things do not go without facing their own challenges. But basically, in the agri-sector of the, of, of the country, every entrepreneurship coming into the agri-sector should have the mindset of coming to solve problems. Of course, if you can provide solutions to people's problems, then maybe whatever you are looking for in, in terms of profit. Would, lead, would, would follow suit. But the challenges start from the, the capital sourcing. Most aspects of agriculture is uh, capital intensive if you want to really start and really do it. However, it doesn't stop you from starting small, probably at the backyard of your house, depending on what you want to do. But we all know that um, it might not be so easy for you to put cow, for instance, at the backyard of your house if you don't have a certain um, size of land as one of your startup capital. So when we're talking of agriculture, land is number one key point, key, key um, subject when you're going into agriculture. You need a land in a secured place because um, we all know what's, uh, what the country looks like now. Security should be top notch in whatever you're doing. So all these things come with their problem. Then accessibility to funds and loan is not as, um, as active as it's supposed to be for people that are intent coming into, into agri. Okay. When, when you cannot assess loan to start up, or even if you have a good proposal and um, even if you are experienced, 
it is something that can easily cause setback and um, it can cause a lot of... Uh, okay, you mentioned land and um, capital. In terms of land, is the challenge of land peculiar to Abuja or is it a national issue in terms of having uh, access to land for agri? Uh, well, the, the challenge of land and um, in agriculture is not only peculiar to Abuja. Uh, like my own field of study, I cover a whole lot of states and even some nearby countries. So it is not only peculiar to Abuja. In any sense so, so it's a it's a general problem nationally. Yes. And uh, what what solutions from your experience? What solutions can you proffer to the land challenge? The number one thing is that um, there, there's there's a policy, there's government policy guiding land use and um, acts in the country. Over the time we will discover that the certain aspects of land that has been reserved for agriculture will not be enough. Even as of now is not enough. So if governments can look into allocation of land, there are still lots of untapped land resources, landed resources that can be used for agriculture. Let them work more on them how to assign and allocate this land, uh, this landed properties that are in strategic places that is suitable for agri. Let, let, let them work on their policies. Okay, viewers, you have been listening to Simon Adeniji. He's uh, an agriculturalist and a consultant and um, a show presenter. And he has mentioned one of the critical issues that, uh, that we have bedeviling uh, the agriculture sector, which is the issue of land. And um, even though he has spoken from the side of government, but also as entrepreneurs too, uh, I'm sure the Land Use Act uh, does not really impact much on very rural lands, you know, that have customary titles. And uh, we will get there as government is trying to improve on the Land Use Act to also encourage people to go back to rural areas so that uh, we can use our local lands and increase uh, the agricultural value chain which is the mainstay of any economy, no matter the level of development. Uh, sit back, uh, we'll go on a short break, and when we come back, we'll continue with the SME Clinic. Thank you. You are still on the program, the SME Clinic. Coach, Coach Alex Baba. In today's edition of the Did You Know, we will be looking at the formula for achieving positive outcomes in life. People say life happens, or what's going to be is going to be. And so they hang their fate in life on outcomes that are beyond their control. Somebody has also said that in life, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you demand. Today, we'll be looking at a simple but profound formula that will help us to maintain a positive outcome in it's called the formula for taking 100% responsibility for your life. Remember, we have said in previous episodes that business is mathematics. And so we'll be using arithmetic to engage in different issues and discussions as we go on. Today's formula, as you see on your screen, is E plus R is equals to O. E will stand for events, R will stand Response and then O will stand for outcome. What do we mean? Events that happen to you and the way you respond to them determines the outcome that you get. Somebody will think that uh, uh, because he didn't go to school in his early years, therefore the possibility, the chances of succeeding in the future is very bleak. Somebody will think that because, um, Government did not do this and that for him. Therefore, his ability to do this and that is weakened. But it's not what happened to you yesterday that determines who you will be tomorrow. It's your response to what happened that will determine that. A negative event can result in a positive outcome. And conversely, a, a positive outcome uh, event can result in a negative difference between reaction and respond is, is in the, um, um, the, 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 the way you handle your emotion. Just reacting is pure emotion. Responding is emotional intelligence. It means that if I am faced with an event 
and I react emotionally out of anger, out of frustration, out of despair, you know, at the end of the day, I am going to be a victim of my circumstance. But if I'm faced and I respond by critically looking at the event, what do I want to achieve? What outcome do I expect? How do I want this to end? And then I tailor my reaction towards where I want to end up. Then the outcome will end up being positive for me. So change from reacting in anger to responding by taking into consideration what your desire will be and then chart a course to accomplish it. That's it for today's section of Did You Know? Uh, remember, always respond to events intelligently, not react emotionally. I shall be bringing you another exciting subject next week. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Nola and I'm a entrepreneur. Hi, my name is Chris Ekemunechi. I'm an SME. Thank you for staying with us so far on the SME Clinic, and I still remain your host, Alex Baba. In this segment, we'll be looking at how to increase your customer loyalty using client if in info. Uh, business is all about customers. The more customers you get, the more opportunities to improve your income, your profit, your turnover. It's not just about getting customers, it's about getting loyal customers customers that will buy from you again and again and tell your stories to the clients. Now, how do we in increase that customer loyalty? There's a simple, you know, tip that you need to be aware of. It's inexpensive to maintain, but it makes a lot of difference. If you consider the fact that everybody wants to be treated specially or exclusively, you know, everybody wants to be, you want to come into a place and you're not just treated as a random person, but you want to be treated, oh, you are welcome, Mr. So so and so, and everybody feels elated. Can we achieve that in our business? There's a little and inexpensive way to do that, and that's to keep a customer file and use the information at the appropriate time. You will see on your screen some information that you need to know. Take time to get as much as information as possible. On their first visit, use the file every time they come back so that they will appreciate the value. Review file at every visit and let them know that you have a file with them. Such information as their full names, special names, their special dates, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, their celebrations in life, their wins, what they purchased last, you know, uh, the observations or comments that they made the last time they were in your business. When they come back and you remind them and show them what you have done with it, they feel elated, they feel special, they feel wanted in your business. So don't be shy when you sell things to people. Ask them for some information and we'll talk about what else to do with those information later. But have those information and let people know that uh, you treat them specially. They are not a herd. They are not a crowd. They are specific persons, specific customers that you do business with and they'll be happy to come back again and again. That's it on our business improvement tips today. Uh, you can leave your questions through any of our contacts as shown on your screen. We'll take a short break and we'll continue when we come back. All right, viewers, welcome back now for the main teaching of the day. We have been looking at the topic, the five proven ways to increase your business profit. And so far, we have looked at two of the factors in our chassis. That's lead generation and conversion. For the benefit of those that just joined us midway, we are exploring a chassis to help us get more customers, improve our turnover, and increase our profit, which are the three main objectives of every business person. But like we said, there are outcomes, and it means that if you just rely on them, you cannot measure progress, you cannot activate actions and activities that will help you to achieve them. They will just remain wishful thinking. So uh, for us to be able to activate processes to give us more customers, improve our turnover, and increase our profit, there are five steps that we need to look at. We are showing that to you on the screen. If you look at it, all the 
entries in red are the outcomes, which is the customer, the revenue, and the profits. The five items are on, on the blue are the five ways you can achieve that. Today, we're going to be looking at the number of transactions. But before we do that, um, let's, let's put in some numbers, as you see on your screen. Uh, if you have 4,000 leads and then you convert by 25%, it means you end up with 1,000 customers. If they buy two times you know, in a period from you at 100 Naira, you end up with a turnover of 200,000. And if you're able to con con control your overheads, you, know, you end up with a profit of 50,000. Now, if you improve on any of these factors by 10%, then it gives you the kind of outstanding results that you are seeing about 40% increase in your, in your profits. Now let's look at the number of transactions. Number of transactions simply talk about the number of times an average customer buys from you within a period. If you are measuring it in, 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 in a monthly, or you are measuring it quarterly or yearly, depending on the kind of business that you do. Now let me ask you a question. If you sell non-essential items or services, you know, how many people will, how many times Will customer buy from you for a year? I'm talking about businesses like a law firm, you know, or a clinic, or a fashion house, or you know, a car mart. These are not businesses that people come to every day to make. Now you say, how do I increase my number of transactions as a as a as a lawyer? How do I increase my number of transactions as a car seller? Now let's let's step back a little. When people come to your shop or to your office. So they have already made up their mind to buy. Now the issue is between buying what they need and making them buy what you think they will need. Now you need to help them arrive at that process. When somebody comes into a law office, you know, to get a lawyer to defend you know, his, his case, you know, and then you do that successfully, it looks like, oh, I'm done with this client, I have no other business with him, but it's not true. It's not as if you are praying for him to have another court case. But there are other services you can offer to him. You can write his will for him. You can help him manage his property. You can, um, you can uh, do his legal drafting and all of that. But he came to you because he needed you to defend him in court. But it's up to you to also let him patronize what you think he will need. The same thing for a doctor, the same thing for all of that. Somebody comes to buy a car from you. Now you're saying he must come back that the same to buy another car, except something wonderful happens to his finances. Not necessarily. But what other add-on services can you sell to him to make him come again and again? Now we have more than 60 strategies that can help you to achieve this, to make people come back to buy more and more. But one fundamental strategy that you should have is a checklist of all of your services, all the associated services, all the ancillary services that you offer. So that if somebody is coming for one service, you have a means of letting him know other services he can also you know, purchase from you. Uh, if you look at your screen, there are some strategies that are displayed there. I just read out some. Uh, making your service better will make somebody want to come back. Uh, give them magic moments. Increase the credit levels they can enjoy. Accept trade-in. Socialize with your clients. Follow up and follow up again. Keep clients vital information. We just talked about that, you know, under our BIT. Uh, Pre-sell or take prepayment contacts, you know. Provide a, a, a shopping list, that's what, and several, several more. So, you can, uh, rather than invest money in getting 10 customers to buy from you once at each instance, you can also get the three customers you already have to buy from you three times, not necessarily at the same rate, but then you will now discover that you are spending more, less in bringing in more leads and then making, making the leads that are already on ground to buy more from you. That makes it inexpensive to acquire your customers, and then it makes it possible for you to sell again and again to the same customer. And then your lifetime acquisition value for that customer will increase tremendously rather than spending more and more money in adverts and in acquiring more leads that you have to make efforts to convert. 
I hope this makes a lot of sense to you. Uh, there's so much information to pass on to you. Um, we'll be organizing full trainings every once in a while so that we'll have time to do all of these things and to practicalize it. But remember, always ask your customers to buy from you. It's not an offense, you know. Uh, some people would make up their mind to buy if you ask them to buy. That's it for today's teaching. Till I come again your way next week, you can leave your questions or your comments on our social media handle. You are welcome back. This is still the SME Clinic, and I remain your host, Coach Alex Baba. We are in the Q&A segment. Uh, someone asked me a question, say, um, how do I get to benefit from uh, all of these teachings that uh, you have been giving to us? Thank you very much, Ade, for that wonderful question. Um, you can contact us via our social media handle. We offer coaching services. We offer consulting services. Uh, the first thing we will do when we meet with you is to give you a one-hour complimentary coaching section, session where we are use our tools and our templates to apply to your business specifically. And then from the outcome that we see, we can both come to a decision uh, what you will need, whether you will need a, a consultancy service to help you put things together, or whether you need a coaching service to walk you through a process that will increase your profitability. So you can contact us. Uh, the phone number is a WhatsApp number also. It's a business WhatsApp number. And then the other social media handle, and I, or any of member of my team, will reach out to you. And uh, I promise you, your business will never remain the same. We tell our clients that we want to move your business in the shortest possible time to a growth, a profit growth rate of 30%. It's something we have done, we are committed to it, and we can do for you. Thank you. That's it for today's edition. I hope you got some useful tips and info to add value to your entrepreneurial activities. You can follow us on our social media handle to get more useful tips as well as enjoy our repeat broadcasts. Join me again next week as we continue with more exciting programs. Stay safe.